This week, I want to talk to you about kind of the, okay, there's a word I want to, I want to teach you. It's called culmination. And culmination means you take everything and you put it in a bucket. And then you look at that. It's like a summary. If you've ever heard of what a summary is in school, uh, but it's a culmination of everything that's happened this year. So this year we had a great start uh, to the year. Uh, January was a great year for pretty much everybody. We heard that, that there was a, a disease that was being spread, but um, there was, you know, it wasn't really bad in the United States. And then all of a sudden it got really bad. Um, I remember when schools were shut down and I remember when churches were shut down. Remember when I had to do these uh, more often than I'm having to do them now, and I couldn't see you. Now I get to see you on Sundays, which is awesome, and I, I praise the Lord that I get to see you on Sundays. And, you know, we have to wear these masks sometimes, right? When we're around other people. And I've always liked the Kansas City Chiefs, so if you don't like the Kansas City Chiefs, then boo. I mean, really. So, and the masks are cumbersome. Oh, they make... Oh, I don't like them sometimes because sometimes I can't breathe in them. And then everyone got back to normal and then they started shutting things down again. And so now we're going back into shutdowns, uh, not necessarily here in Arkansas, but I, I have friends in other states and they say they can't even they can't even go to the grocery store. Uh, without protection on, uh, and that's by law. Uh, you cannot go out of the house. So, and and then so that's that's one of the bad things that's happened this year. There have been a lot of deaths this year, hasn't there? A lot of people has has lost loved ones, and, and death really is it. It looks like it's the final thing. But it's truly not. Death is only the beginning. But what we do with our life on earth determines what, what happens to us after death. So uh, I, I like the way that the author, um, uh, Mark Lowry, put, uh, uh, put it. And uh, he said that this is boot camp. Uh, so if you don't know what boot camp is, that's what the military goes through to train in order to go to combat. And that's basically what we're doing is we're training in order to go to combat. But see, here's the thing. Jesus says, I've already fought the battle for you. You don't have to lift a finger. All you have to do is turn whatever you're going through over to me, and I will take it upon myself. And he, he also says that my burden is light and my yoke is easy. A yoke... What is a yoke? And this, this kind of goes along with what I'm saying. This just came to my mind. But a yoke, if you ever if if you've ever went to someone who raises uh, cows and they use those cows to plow their fields, they have to put a yoke on the cow. And and usually it's an ox, because an ox is about a time one one and a half times the size of a cow, and it's a lot stronger. And it can pull the plow a lot easier. And an ox will listen to you, whereas a cow won't. Their cow's kind of dumb. I mean, that's just the way they are. It's the way God made them. But an ox will actually listen to you. You can you can yee and you can haw and you can whoa and you can let's go to a to an ox and it'll actually listen to you. Same as a donkey. But they put a yoke on the cow on the on the ox, and it weighs about seventy pounds. And so what it's designed to do is it's designed to keep the ox from taking off with you and the plow because sometimes you kind of get on the plow so you're pushing pressure down on the plow. And I, I'm chasing rabbits here, but here's, here's, what, I wanna, here's what I wanna explain to you. This, this yoke is heavy. And Jesus says that my burden, uh, that, I that my yoke is easy or my, my, uh, and my burden is light. My yoke is easy and my, and my burden is light. What he's saying is, is that you can take your problems and put them on my shoulders and I'll take care of them. So this week, uh, this Wednesday, I want to talk to you about God has a purpose in tough times. 
This has been one of the toughest times that I have ever experienced. And I've experienced 41 years of tough times. I've experienced 19 years of marriage, which I, I can't say that all of it has been tough. Most of it has been awesome, but there have been some tough times. Our first year, Miss Angela and I really struggled because we had to get to know each other. We didn't know each other like we did when we were dating because we had never lived with each other. So we, got to, we had to get to know each other, and it was really tough uh, to get to know each other and, and to, to be a couple. Uh, and, and so, and, and it's really tough when we first become a Christian too, because we don't know what's going on. And I know that you guys have a lot of questions and, and I try to answer those and it's tough to, to ask a question and not have an answer to it right now. So keep the questions coming. I really enjoy those, but here's what I want you to do. I want you to get your Bible out and turn to James chapter one, James chapter one. And the, the cool thing is, is you can pause the video and turn over to James chapter 1 so I can keep going. And James chapter 1 verses 1 through 4 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. You know what the word lacking means? Have you ever went on a trip and forgot something? That's lacking. You're lacking that item. I went on a trip before and forgot my medicine. I had to turn around and go back. We were about an hour away from home, and I had to have my medicine because we were going to be gone for several days. So I was lacking my medicine. And here, here James is saying that if you... Uh, consider it pure joy to face trials of many kinds uh, because it will produce perseverance. What's perseverance, Pastor Donnie? That's a big word, and, and I haven't learned that word yet. Perseverance is, is this. Perseverance is this. You get up every day, every weekday. You put on a mask. You get on a bus or you ride a car or maybe you walk to school and you go to school with a mask on, and you last all day long, you eat your lunch without the mask on, and I don't know if you can, I don't know if you have recess or not. Uh, my kids are so old, we don't have recess anymore, so, but I don't know. But you, you have this mask on all day long. That's persevering. That's, and, and the other part of persevering is, is, is this, you don't complain about it. And, you know, I've never heard you guys complain upstairs in the children's center when we had to wear masks. Uh, you know, we just spread out and sit down and, and we do our thing. And that's what persevering is. Um, a lot of people think that it's when people wrong you over and 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 over again. And it, it technically is. And that's when God says, turn those burdens over to me and I will take care of it. Because, you know, vengeance is not ours. And I look around all the time and I see people that that I would consider a sinner, okay? And I'm not God, so if, if I started calling people sinners, then that means I'm judging them. So I can't do that, and I won't do that because that's not my job. My job is to be a fisher of men, But but I see some people just getting everything they want. And, and here, little old me, I don't get hardly anything that I want. I, I got everything I wanted for Christmas and more, but, you know, sometimes we don't get what we want. And when we wake up the next day and we forget about not getting what we want and we go about our day, that's persevering. And we don't complain about it, but we look forward to maybe getting that next year or for our birthday. What if, what if you didn't get the birthday present that you wanted? Now, you, you don't know the reason why you didn't get it. Now, a lot of families, um, a lot of families, um, they just can't afford that high-end item. And, and Santa Claus just doesn't bring it to you. I mean, Santa Claus knows what a kid needs. So, and, and Santa Claus gets all his information from Jesus. I know that because I'm an, I'm an adult now, and I know how all the system works. So, so if you think that Santa Claus and Jesus are, are on two different terms, that's, that's totally wrong because Jesus talks to Santa Claus. I mean, 
Santa Claus talks to Jesus and he gets his orders from Jesus. And if you don't believe me, ask an elf. All right. So here's the thing. It, it, the bad things happen to everybody. And, and a lot of people say, well, they happen worse to Christians. And that's just not true. And the reason that that's just not true is, is people that do not live right don't let people know about their problems because they want them to look big and dignified and they want to look like everything's perfect. Well, Jesus said, if you come to me and you confess everything, then I will take you on as a child. I will adopt you into my family and you will be welcomed unto me. I will I will hug you to my breast and 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 the Bible actually says breast, actually it says bosom, but that's what a breast is, is a bosom. And and what closest place to someone's heart than than their bosom or their breast? And and Jesus Jesus is saying, let go of everything that's going on. The bad things that are happening to us. Let go of it. Don't hold on to it. Because if we continue to hold on to those bad things, it's just going to... I'm going to teach you another word. It's, it's, it's called harbor. And it's going to harbor resentment. That's another big word. Resentment. You're going to start not liking God because you kept asking for these enormous things and God... He, he knows the future, and he didn't deliver that big thing. You ask God for, maybe you ask God for this, this awesome computer that, that you just think you needed and you wanted and you didn't get it, and then, and then you're, you blame God because God didn't give it to you. But, but maybe your friend that asked for the same computer, they got their computer, and, and you wonder why. And this is a perfect conversation for the week following Christmas because a lot of heartache happens after Christmas because people don't get what they want. And and I'm one of them. I didn't get everything that I wanted. But you know what? I'm happy with the stuff that I got because my wife and my kids and my mother-in-law and the people that gave me stuff put thought into it. They used their brain. They used their heart. And that's all that matters. And Jesus says, Jesus says, listen, if you want to be part of me, then you've got to be joyful even through the trials and, and, and the tribulations. Tribulations are just other bad things that happen to you. And then he says this, let perseverance finish its work. What does that mean? Does that mean we die? What what does it okay? So when we hear the word finish, that means complete, right? What are we talking about? What 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 do we need to do, Pastor Donnie? Do we need to just keep going until we die? No, we need to keep don't going until we get an answer. Okay, here's the thing: if we want a healing in our life, we don't pray just once for it. How many times have you wanted something and you bothered your mom and dad or grandma or grandpa or aunt and uncle? or sister, or brother, whoever you go to to ask for things? Did you ask them just once? No. You go to them, you're like, Mom, I really want this. Dad, I really want this. Mom, I really want this. Dad, I really want this. And then it turns into, I need. Right, parents? Mom, I really need this. Dad, I really need this. And then we start giving excuses about why we really need Dad, my old one is so broken. Mom, my old one is so broken. It's outdated. It can't connect to the internet anymore. I need a brand new one. And then, and then Santa Claus doesn't bring it to us. And then we get angry. Then we don't want to come back to church anymore because sometimes we pray that a loved one doesn't die. And God takes that loved one from us. And, and I say it like that because that's what happens. God is the one who, who has determined everyone's lifespan. And he says, on this day, you will die. Now, sometimes we do things like I overeat. That may in my life before God had planned. And that's, that's on me. That's not on God. Or, or maybe, maybe I, I, I drank when I was you know, younger, drank alcohol. And now my liver's failing. That's that's on me. That's not on God. God didn't God didn't make me drink that. God didn't make me do those bad things. God didn't make me uh, be mean to people all the time. God didn't make me do that. I did. So God has a day when we're going to die. 
And when people live to their ripe old age of 97, 100, 110, 115, they've lived an awesome life. And that's what God wants. But see, people that, that resent God do things other than follow his will. And that's what James is trying to say here. Listen, don't go after the things of the world. If you didn't get that high-end item this year, don't worry about it. It's just a high-end item. It's okay. You're going to live. It really, you're going to live to see the next day. Use what you have. Use what you have. So, all right. So, James, James is trying to tell us to persevere. James is trying to tell us to have joy in times of sorrow. James is trying to help tell us to have joy when things don't go our way. And things haven't gone our way this year. I, I can tell you that. But, let's see, God had a plan. And even though they didn't go my way, they went God's way. And sometimes we don't even know what God's plan is. Why is that? Oh, Pastor Nani, I don't know what God's plan is for my life. Have you ever shut up and listened? I mean, really, have you ever shut up and listened? And I'm sorry, I'm sorry to use that harsh word, shut up. But sometimes I think God goes, shut up and let me talk. And, and the thing is that if we don't listen to God, we'll never find out what he wants for us. So maybe, maybe that controller, that, that new controller that we needed, maybe that was going to take more time than God wanted you to take. Maybe that new uh, laptop, maybe that new gaming system, maybe that new TV, maybe that whatever. Maybe this new whatever that you wanted was going to take play, take the place of God. And God said, I really don't want that. I want you. I don't want you to be stuck on something else. And God said, no. Or, or maybe God saw the pain that someone was going through. And he says, I don't want you to go through that much pain anymore. And he, he took the life from them. Not to make you hurt. Not to make you sad. Not to make us cry, but, but he had a heart and he was like, I can't bear to see this person hurting anymore. So, I've often heard that kids don't go through hard times. And I'm here to tell you that I've seen children go through tougher times than adults. And, and kids, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brag on you guys because sometimes... Sometimes you act better than the adults do. It's true. Sometimes adults, they cry and, and they, they don't get their way. And they, they use bad fingers or fingers that we call bad. Or they say words that really they really don't mean. Kids, you are so resilient. Resilient. What, what, what is that, Pastor Donnie? That means that whatever happens to you, you bounce it back. Because you're like, oh, it's okay. Maybe next year. And and you bounce back and, and things are they go back to normal. But for an adult, we're like, what are we gonna do now? So sometimes we learn things from you, kiddos. So hard times are going to come. That's inevitable. That I we cannot avoid hard times ever. So they're going to come. And and James says that we need we must persevere through those hard times. So, um, so, trials and temptations are, are, are there to form us into who God wants us to be. And God wants us to be Christians that are willing to turn everything over to Him Every decision that we make, every thought that we have is God's. Now, I've got to tell you that, Pastor Donnie, not every thought that I have is of God because there's times that, that I, you know, I, I just, I literally want to punch someone in the face. But I've got to go, you know, God, you're going to take care of that person for me. So I'm going to let you deal with that. And that's what, that's what James is trying to say here. I want to go back to the Old Testament. I want to catch a verse that's in Nahum. 
and and oh oh we're going to the old testament now yeah nahum uh we're going back and and here we see uh nahum t uh talking to the 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 uh israelites uh, once again uh god's people and they're in they're in trouble they 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 are lost again they're trying to get back to where god wants them uh, they've asked for a Messiah. God's preparing to send a Messiah. This is before the New Testament came. So here we have Nahum. And, and Nahum says in chapter 1, verse 7, and he says, The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. I, I think Sunday we really need to, need to do a trust fall because that really shows how much faith we put in God because God wants us to spread our arms and fall back into him and, and let him have control of everything because when we do that, when we do that, then that's when God can take us and mold us into who he wants us to be. God wants us to trust him with everything, even the things we ask for. So let me let me let me say that tough times have been tough this year. But it's going to get better. Do you know how I know? Because James says here, let perseverance finish its works so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. You didn't leave anything behind. You didn't regret anything because you followed God and you persevered through the hardest times, even in times of trouble, even in times of sorrow. Let me pray with you right quick. God, I pray that you would be with these kiddos this week and the weeks to come. And I know this is the last Wednesday in 2020, and sometimes we want to forget 2020. But God... I think we should remember 2020 because you have been faithful even through the hard times. And you have given us so much even through the hard times. Even through the difficult kind of times, you have been so faithful. And we thank you for that. We thank you for your son Jesus who came as a babe in a manger, who gave up immortality and came as a babe in a manger. The biggest sacrifice that this world has ever seen. And God, he did it because he loved these kids, and he loved me, and he loved everyone on earth that has been or yet to come. And God, we thank you for that love, that agape love, that says, no matter what, I still love you. That reaches far beyond we could ever imagine. And that love is what compels us to be who we are today. Christians, people that do Christian things. May we persevere through all this hard time. May we persevere. May we keep on doing what you have called us to do. And God, may we not get angry at you because of certain things that have happened, but may we rejoice because we don't know the future. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless. Peace be with you.